Hi there. Um, this is Apple Angel, and this is uh, my very first Let's Play ever. So I've been wanting to do a Let's Play for a seriously long time, and you know, like at the time that I wanted to do Let's Plays, I had like two computers that were both like six years old, and I all every piece of software that I was trying to find to. Uh, be able to do let's plays that can allow me to uh, capture like game audio and like game play and also capture my own voice had like just wouldn't work for my computers because my computers had just been so old and uh, I just recently got a new computer uh, that I paid with my own money and I'm still amazed that I was able to be able to oh whoops sorry about that um, that I was able to buy my own computer with my own money out of my own pocket. And, um... So, like, I have a new computer, and I have the means to be able to make Let's Plays now. So this is my very first, first Let's Play, and this is for a game series that I've loved for a very long time. This is Fallout. This is a uh, post-apocalyptic RPG. And I'm sure some of you are very... I'm sure... I'm sure some of you are pretty familiar with the Fallout series, but this is the very first Fallout game that came out in 1997 for the PC. Um, and this is actually a lot different than they were the Fallouts that we know, like Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, and just recently Fallout 4. And. Uh, I thought that this would be a good game to start out with because like I love the Fallout series. It's one of my favorite game series ever. And uh, I'm actually wearing a Fallout t-shirt right now. I'm wearing my uh, new California Republic t-shirt because I am from California. And what's not to love about the logo for the new California Republic? It's got a mutant bear with two heads. How rad is that? Um, before I start rambling anymore, let's actually start playing the game. So let's start a new game. And, uh, okay, so right off the bat, the very, uh, the first thing about this game versus the other game in the games in the Fallout series is that, um, there's actually characters that have been already pre-made that you can choose to play in the series. Like, we have Max Stone. And, uh, I'll just give you a moment so that you can read his info right here. And actually, he has a... Wow, he has like a whole bunch of strength. Check that out. And, um, not very high intelligence. <laughs> mm, yeah, I'm not feeling this guy. And here's another character um, who is a female character. And um, I don't know if you can hear that, but that's just my cat crying outside the door. <laughs> so ignore that. Um, this is a female character. Her name's Natalia, and she doesn't have a lot of strength, but she has a very high intelligence and very high charisma. Usually, when I uh, pick characters in Fallout, I usually pick characters that have like high intelligence and high charisma because I'm all about the story mode in um, in the Fallout games. And uh, if your charisma and your intelligence is pretty high, you're able to access a lot of information and a lot of backstory about the Fallout universes. So, that's Natalia. Oh, here's Albert. And, um, oh, he has really high charisma, but everything else is pretty low. Is there another character? I have a feeling there's like one more character. Oh, no. I guess, I honestly thought there were four characters in the first game, but I guess there's just three pre-made characters it looks like so uh, we're not actually gonna take any of these characters we're actually gonna make our own so we're gonna click on create character right here okay so if any of you are new to the Fallout series um, this is how you create a character in the Fallout series so there's the uh, special mode right here and if any of you are interested in like um, making a character for like a tabletop RPG like for instance Dungeons and Dragons it kind of applies here. You have to figure out like how much strength you want, um, which is what ST stands for. Perception is um, 
kind of like how you pick up on things. Like, uh, it's especially important for when you're kind of like looking for items. Also, like when you're um, trying to attack enemies and you're trying to like figure out their weakness points, I think. Endurance um, is basically energy. Um, it, and I think it also applies to strength as well. Like it's basically like um, your health points. Like if you have low endurance, you're going to have low health points. But if you have high endurance, you have high health points. CH is uh, what I was talking about earlier, it's charisma. And uh, with charisma, it's basically how you're able to uh, talk to the characters in the series. If you have low charisma, you're not going to be able to get a lot of information from characters. But if your charisma is really high, you're able to get a lot more information from, char from characters. It can also apply to um, when you're buying and like trading and bartering with characters. If you have high enough charisma, you're able to actually get items for much cheaper. And you're also able to uh, be able to trade items for much better items. Ion is intelligence, and I also brought this up before. And intelligence is basically um, literally your intelligence, like how smart you are. And um, intelligence is especially useful for like when you run uh, run, run across like computer terminals, and you're able to like get into the computer terminals a lot easier, especially locked terminals if you have high intelligence. I always take um, higher intelligence because I'm always interested in getting into the computers and the Fallout games and learning more about the lore and also just um, um, information in general. And intelligence also affects like um, your speech as well. Like um, I've seen playthroughs of people who like start with like absolutely the lowest in intelligence and they literally talk like cave people it's really it's really funny and also a little bit irritating because it just looks because like all of your uh, options are just like oh duh, whoa. because like you can choose options from when you're talking to characters and if you have like super duper low intelligence it's just like oh blah, duh. <laughs> ag is agility which is, um, it has to do with speeds, and it especially has to do with um, your speed in combat. Like, if you're able to um, get more attacks in um, between um, waiting for turns from when you're attacking characters or attacking enemies. So, it wouldn't hurt to have that at a little bit higher than average. And luck is uh, LK, and luck is uh, pretty important too. Like, luck can um, apply to a lot of different things. Like, it can apply to speech. It can apply to um, if you're able to get a hold of really good items. Uh, it can apply to... Um, I think it can also apply to how often you get attacked as well when you're playing the game. So, that's enough yapping for me. Let's actually get started on making a character. So I'm going to enter my name, and whenever I play a game and you're able to enter your name, I always choose Angel, because like one of my old... Because like um, my handle is Apple Angel, and like I had a lot of like games where I just enter Angel as a nickname. And um, I'm not 25 anymore, I'm actually 28, turning 29 this year, because I'm super old. And I am a lady! So I'm going to choose a lady, and um, let's figure out what to do for points. Um, hmm. Well, I definitely want high intelligence. And actually, it's uh, whenever you click on one of these, it'll display like a little thingy right here. That'll just, um, just explain like which thing that you've selected, and just like a little blurb about how important each of these little tabs are. So, I got 7 for intelligence. I definitely want high charisma. Oh crap. Like, I only have one point left and I need to figure out... Well, I definitely want high charisma. Um, hmm. What can I sacrifice? 
to make one thing a little bit higher. I do want, I would like to have more hit points, but I don't know. And I want agility to be pretty good too. See, this is the toughest part about making a character is that you kind of have to think like what you can sacrifice to make one skill like higher than the other. It's, it really sucks. We are back. I am so sorry about that. I got a phone call and I had to stop the recording just to see who called me. Unfortunately, I don't know who did call me. I'm going to have to check that out later. Um, but now we're back. And um, like I said before, it's kind of tough trying to figure out what you can sacrifice to make, um, to uh, give more strength for uh, regarding all of your options over here. Um, hmm. You know, I think I'm going to just go with what I have right here. I think this is pretty good. This is pretty balanced. Like, I definitely want to have high charisma and I definitely want to have high intelligence. Um, I'm, I would like to have more hit points though, but oh well, we're going to have to figure that out later. You're definitely going to be able to um, level up in the game as well, and you'll be able to level up certain areas uh, regarding uh, your strength and perception and whatnot. So let's take a look here. These are skills, and uh, depend and like uh, depending on which skill you pick, um, it'll definitely help your survival in Fallout. And I usually pick... Science usually has to do with computers, so I'm definitely going to choose science. And what else do I want to choose? Speech, I definitely want to choose as well. Because speech can definitely um, help you out with charisma. And what else? Um, there's one more. I need to figure out what to use with it. Well, um, hmm. Actually, first aid would probably be not too bad since, like, I don't have a lot of hit points. And with first aid, you're able to, um, I think, like, if you use medical items and you, you have first aid, you can be able to maybe, um, get more healing out of them. And you can also, um, you also apply first aid to yourself in the field uh, when you're playing. And I think with first aid, um, you're able to uh, heal a little bit better than if you didn't have it. So I'm going to choose first aid as well. These are optional traits, and these are just like um, things like bloody mess. Like if you choose bloody mess, like when you attack and like finish off enemies, it gets super gross. <laughs> A lot of people choose Bloody Mess just for the hell of it, just for fun. Um, hmm. And you're probably wondering what chems are, and I'm going to explain that later. But chems are kind of a bit of a controversy in the Fallout series, and I'll explain why that is. Uh, you know, I don't think I'm going to choose any of these. I think I'm kind of good uh, with what I got. Actually, I wonder if I should choose good nature. Good nature sounds pretty good. No, I don't think I'm going to choose these. I think I'm going to go with what I got. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with what I got. I think we're good here. So let's get out of here. We're all finished. So our character's name is Angel. She's 28. She is a lady. And um, these are all of our stats. She has a lot of charisma and a lot of intelligence. And she's kind of average and everything else. And she's got a first aid, science, and speech. So let's go for it. We're done. And here's our intro. Ha! Ah, you're here. Good. We've got a problem. A big one. The controller chip for our water purification system has given up the ghost. Can't make another one. And the process is too complicated for a workaround system. Simply put. We're running out of drinking water. No water, no vault. This is crucial to our survival. And frankly, I, I think you're the only hope we have. 
You need to go find us another controller chip. We estimate we have four to five months before the vault runs out of water. We need that chip. We marked your map with the location of another vault. Not a bad place to start, I think. Look, just be safe. Okay? All right, here we are. We just left our vault. In case anyone is curious, um, in the Fallout universe, um, a bunch of um, World War III happened. A bunch of bombs um, fell and basically destroyed a big chunk of the world, especially the United States. And um, a lot of the people um, of the United States um, were able to escape to these uh, underground um, shelters called vaults. And we happen to be one of the people who uh, grew up their whole lives in this vault. Because this, um, um, in this game, the war happened 200 years ago. And this takes place 200 years after that war happened. So uh, we basically grew up like a whole, like several generations since that bomb happened. And we have never been to the outside world before. And this is our first taste of the outside world. And here I am. So, if you have played the other Fallout games, you'll definitely notice that this is much different than how the game is set up in uh, the other Fallout games versus here. And this is kind of typical for a lot of uh, PC games that are similar to this one during the 90s and um, I think during the late 80s too. Um, but let's take a look. At these bones right here. You search the bones. And check it out. Um, I guess there was a dude that was trying to escape the vault. It didn't work out. And he um, left us some ammo and left us a knife. I don't necessarily need two knives, but um, if you find any extra stuff, uh, it definitely wouldn't hurt to just hang on to it just so that we can sell it when we get to a town or when we get to a place that has a shop. So let's get out of here. And um, speaking of weapons, I think it'd be a good idea to um, equip our character with a weapon. So we have a gun, but I don't want to waste ammo because like we are just starting out. So let's go ahead and give the character a knife for now. And actually before, actually before we start, um, actually playing the game. I think this video has gone pretty long. Uh, so this is just our basic intro to the series. And um... Oh, whoops. Actually, never mind. We're fighting right now. Okay, we are fighting a rat. And I totally missed. <laughs> and I missed again. Alright, so, well, this is how the combat goes in the game. Unfortunately, the combat is a little bit clunky. Especially if you're used to the newer Fallout games versus this series. Oh crap, I'm out of range. I... Oh my god, are you serious? Are you serious? Oh my god, please kill the stupid thing. There we go. We actually hit it. Okay, let's try again. No, I need more action points, so I gotta walk over here. The stupid thing bit me, so let's attack it again. And we killed it! Whoopee! 
And the rat has nothing, so we can't loot from it. Okay, so combat is over. So you're probably wondering what just happened. But with combat, um, what this little uh, target thing is that's moving around the screen, this is actually where I'm walking. So I have to click somewhere to walk. Kind of like in a point and click adventure game. But when you're attacking, um, well, first off, if you click this uh, red button, it can put your weapon away and it can also bring your weapon out. And in the inventory, uh, when you need a weapon, you just take a weapon from here and you drag it to the item one box. And actually, the item two box I reserve for like healing. So I'm just gonna grab one of these stim packs here, which um, it looks kind of freaky, but like this is basically your healing item. And I'm just gonna drag it to item two. So I'm gonna have to get out. And actually, that's just me spinning around. That's just all of our stats. Um, it also lists our hit points just to see like how much health we have. Actually, I don't think that rat attacked us at all. And there I am spinning. And this is uh, reserved for armor, but we don't have any armor just yet. We just have our little uh, vault jumpsuit that um, everyone is issued when you live in a vault. Totally not, um, totally not weird at all. And um, I don't think we really need anything else. Like I said, we don't have any armor, it looks like. So we'll just leave that empty for now. We'll be able to get armor later. So like during fighting, um, you have to click on the little knife thing and like there's a little bit of a crosshair when you're uh, you do hover over an enemy and you click on it to attack the enemy but like it says like if you're out of action points what you need to do is that you need to click elsewhere on the map so that you can move out of the way and then like get more um, action points and you also have to wait for the enemy's turn as well um, I know that's not the best way to describe how the fighting works in this game, but I hope um, that you um, kind of get the idea of how that's if that's how fighting works in this game. Anyway, I think we're finished here for now. Um, this went on pretty long, but like I think I'm gonna stop the video here. I want to thank everybody for um, watching this video. And if you uh, like this series, if you'd like to see more of it, um, rate my videos, uh, leave a comment, and subscribe, subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you soon with part two. Thank you very much, and I'll see you later. Bye!